Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise. I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. Today I'm here to bring you a wig review in partnership with Name Brand Wigs. This is Henry Margu Devon. It's a brand new style and it's in the color 2418GR. 2418GR. Her name is Devon. She is a practically fully hand tied cap straight short bob with some razored ends. If you want to know more about this style, then stick around. Thank you Name Brand Wigs for sending me Devin so that I could show all of my wig sisters this cute new style by Henry Margu. If you're not familiar with Name Brand Wigs, they are an online retailer. They are local to me in Minnesota and I have been a customer of theirs since the very beginning of my wig wearing journey. I think they're wonderful. They have great customer service. They have a blog and they do support lots and lots of wig reviews so that us wig sisters can get all the information that we need. It's so awesome. If you have not checked them out, I encourage you to go to their website, namebrandwigs.com, and I will link this piece in the description. All right, let's take a look at Devin from all sides. So this wig is a very low density, very straight bob with some slight layers and razored textured ends. I really think the star of the show with this one is the low density. I know I have a lot of wig sisters who struggle with poof and volume on wigs, especially if you've been losing your hair for some time. It can be so frustrating to try on wig after wig and feel like it looks wiggy because it's so much hair. This piece is not like that. It is very low density, no poof, no permatease at all, and the cap, except for just a few small little wefts at the very bottom, is fully hand-tied, which gives you the most kind of natural, low-density uh, fit. And so if you're looking for something that isn't going to overwhelm you with hair, Devon could be a good one to look at because it's so flat and so low density. If, on the other hand, you need a little bit of volume and poof in your wigs that just is what feels most natural to you, or because of your face shape, it just looks a little bit better on you, then Devon probably isn't the style for you. It's just there's no way that you're getting any volume at all. Not even if you took steam to this one or put product in it. It just doesn't have the hair <laughs> and it doesn't have the permatease that would be needed. Now, like I said, this piece has a um, nearly fully hand tied cap. So we have a lace front, a full mono top, so you can part it anywhere up here on the top, I think. You know what? That doesn't feel right to me. Let me take this off. I review so many wigs, I can be forgetful. It is a full mono top. All right, we'll look at the cap now and then I can talk about the rest of that. So there you go, your full mono top. I thought that would be strange to have a fully hand tied cap, but only a mono part. And then you've got all of this is hand tied. Like I said, all except for just a few closed wefts on the bottom and a lot of wig manufacturers have started doing that. I think it, number one, it can help keep the price point down because if all these fully hand tied features raise that price quite a lot because it takes so much longer to make a wig because a human being has to hand tie each fiber in. But it also helps keep that bottom laying nice and flat. And so that is something I'm, I'm seeing more and more. All of this is hand tied. What that does is it gives you really low profile, flat to the head. You don't have any bulk from wefts. And it helps all of the fibers in the hand tied sections to move a lot more naturally because they're able to move around on the axis of a knot as opposed to being sewn in a weft track. And it really limits the amount of movement that you can get out of those hair fibers. Let's talk about that lace front and the mono top where you can part anywhere. I have a couple of cautions for you, at least in this color. I can't speak to any other color, but the the rooting on this, we'll talk about color in a little bit, but the rooting on this is very, very dark. I would guess it's a four. It's a very dark root and they didn't take in those blonde highlights up to the root. So I want you to see the knotting. There is visible knotting on this. It's very hard 
to avoid on a dark color like this. Now, because this is has a lace front, you could take it and you could pin it up in the front to get some lift on your face, especially if you struggle with the low volume. One way to deal with that is to clip up some of the hair and give yourself like a little bump it. That gives you a little bit more volume in the front if that's what you need. But on this dark one, you do see those knots. If you're sensitive to that, you can use makeup to cover them up. Uh, it's it's a, lots of different things you can use to cover those knots, but I wanted you to be aware. The other thing I want you to be aware of is it's very densely knotted on the top, and it's very hard to see that monofilament. Now, you can part it anywhere you want within that whole monofilament, which is pretty much all of this. So you could do a deep part, a narrow part, a center part, a left part, a right part, whatever you want. But the fibers are densely knotted up there, even though this doesn't have a lot of hair and you really can't see that monofilament very well. So if you're like me and you'd like to be able to see that part line, especially if you're paying a premium price for the uh, hand tied feature, um, then you're probably gonna wanna pluck it. I do have a video where I show you how to pluck a, a part line on a wig. I also show you how to change a part because sometimes they can be stubborn. This one comes wanting to part where you see it and if I wanted to switch it, I would have to work at it because it keeps wanting to spring back. Some of that is just training and getting those fibers to change their direction and, and working those knots and sometimes it takes heat. So I'll, uh, I'll link any of the videos I have that could help you with that in the description. Now this wig has about a total of 13 inches in length so I actually took a tape measure to it to measure the length of this bob and down to the very end of the hair in the back and from the crown down it's about 13 inches um, these on the sides are, are roughly about nine inches and the bang is five and a half inches so it's probably too long for anyone to call this a full bang I'm about between three and three and a half inches between my hairline and where I would want bangs to fall on me. So if I wanted to wear this as a full bang, I would have to trim it. So if you are someone who likes full bangs, this one could absolutely be trimmed to be a full bang. You would just have to um, get it to the length that will work for you. I have a video, of course I do, showing you how to do that and I will link that in the description. So if you do get this or a wig like it and, and the bang is just too long, then go ahead and trim it right up. It's really easy to do and I show you a simple way to do it, even if you have no experience cutting hair, because I certainly don't. My technique will really get you there. Now let's talk about fit. Henry Margot is known for running really true to average. This wig is fitting me pretty true to average now I do have it cinched in just a little bit and I have a 22 inch circumference so my circumference is average and I did cinch this in a little but where I'm finding that this might run a little small is up here over the top this hand tied cap is fitting me like a glove I have no extra cap up here normally when I do this I get a lot of extra cap I don't have that on this one my over the top of my head measurements are actually quite petite I will, um, I always include them in the description box of every video, but I encourage you to go look at them if you're not sure if this wig will fit you if you've never tried a Henry Margot wig before so that you can compare them to yours. I'm getting really good coverage. These ear tabs come way down. You really can't see much of my bio hair on the sides at all. So if I wanted to tuck this, I could tuck this really easily because there's no permatease and no volume and I don't have to worry about my bio hair showing. So I'm getting really excellent coverage, but there just isn't a lot of extra cap on the top. So if you're b bigger than me by very much at all over the top of your head, I'd be concerned that it's going to kind of fit snug. And what happens is then the ear tabs ride higher up on you and so potentially with the nape. I'm finding this to fit me really perfectly. I have room to grow in the circumference, so if you're a little bit bigger than me in your circumference, I think you'll be fine. It's just the over the top of the head that I'd be a little bit concerned All about. All right, let's talk about color. This color is 2418GR. In the Henry Margot line, a GR means gradient root, and that means that they, they kind of, the color starts off a darker root and then it gradually gets lighter all the way down to the end. That's what GR means. That's, that's not super obvious in this piece. I don't see a lot. Once you kind of get past that dark root, 
there's not a lot of change all the way down. So the color codes in this one, 24, 18, I'll break those down for you. So a 24 is a light golden blonde and an 18 is either a dark ash blonde or the lightest ash brown. And their description really is medium ash brown with subtle dark gold highlights and gradient root. That's how they describe it. And I think that's a really apt description. The biggest concern and caution, my necklace keeps pulling back. You notice I keep grabbing it. I've never worn these necklaces on video before and they're driving me crazy. <laughs> um, uh, the caution I think I would give you about this one is the root is very dark. Dark. So if you like rooting, but you don't like a really dark root, this one is fairly dark. When I look at it up close, I think it's a, a four. I really do. I could be wrong. And normally I'm really sensitive to a root on a, on a blonde because I know that makes a root look darker. But when I look at this up close, it even looks dark just in natural light. You can see that. So here's... I would say that you can definitely see the ash tones in here, but you can also see the gold tones in here. It makes it neutral, leaning warm, in my opinion, with the piece that I have. The rooting is a pretty ashy though. There's no real warmth or red tones in the rooting. And like I said, there's the, the ends are a little bit lighter, but not much. I'd say that the blending of the golden blonde and the ash blonde is, is pretty good. They've blended it really well. It's not like a soup. You don't see a ton of highlights in here. I mean, it's dynamic, but it's not a strongly highlighted piece. All right, everybody, let's get outside so you can see this color outside. My overall impression of this piece is it's very low density. It's going to be perfect for someone who just doesn't like a lot of hair. If you like a real kind of simple hairstyle, you don't mind the razored ends. Because this is such light density, these ends are actually fairly wispy. Oh, and one other thing I should mention, I, I meant to talk about this when I showed the lace front. You can actually see, let me get this here, you can see that transition between the lace and the cap really well. Can you see that right there? They didn't do that great of a job of hiding that transition. Sometimes it's visible, sometimes it's not. What that means for you is if you are someone who's going to want to pull this off your face a lot, you're gonna have to be really careful about how deep you go, how wide you go with that because you're gonna need to keep some hair down to hide that transition. But if you don't think you're ever gonna do that or if you're gonna cut bangs into this, that's not gonna be a problem at all. Even tucking, is fine. It's just if you want to do the off the face styling. So I did want to mention that. And that is something that might not be as obvious on another piece. So the piece that I have is showing that, but you could get another piece and they might have done a better job of hiding that transition. It's just kind of, it is what it is. But I wanted you to know. All right, you guys, let's get outside. Thank you, Name Brand Wigs, for sending me this piece. This is out of the box. I'm not tacking on an out of the box. I took it out of the box. I did my unboxing for Instagram. So if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen that there. It looked just like this. I didn't have to do anything at all to it. I combed through it and that is it. So I'm not going to tack the unboxing on. But easy to know. If you purchase this one, I think it'll look just like it should look. And so you should be able to make a, a quick decision if it's going to work for you or not. All right, guys, let's get outside. Hey everyone, we're outside with this color. Get Move it up to the front here so you can see it. You can see it's lighter at the ends, and then it is rooted. Got to work on that part a little bit. I have not reviewed this yet. I'm doing the outside look first, so I do need to review this and study it, but I had to take advantage of the weather. We've had horrible weather for the past three weeks. It's been just terrible. There have been very few days I could get out here and film.
So I'll talk more about this color in the actual review. Once I have time to study it. One more look at the rooting. Okay, thanks for watching.